most memorable or worst moments in Marvel Strike Force history. Joined with me today is Taco Shooter, and we're going to talk about top 10 moments that we just came together. Now, I'm sure you have top 10 moments that are not on this list, but there are so many, and they're actually kind of funny, right? Some of these things that have happened in the history of Marvel Strike Force. A lot of them are hilarious, and a lot of them are horrifying, and I can't wait to go through this, and I can't wait to see what people say in the comment section that they're, that were their worst moments. Yes, so this is not just worst moments, but it's just like, what the hell happened here? Like, oh my god, <laughs> this game. And the game has been up for five years, so it's not surprising that there's several, right? And I'm sure there's some that we're going to miss. So this one, what are we going to call this one? This was a patch day. And the patch was bugged. They actually had to pull the game down. And the game the game was down for like seven hours. And they had to roll everything back and redo the patch. But you could see on the screen, the gold is just climbing and climbing. And it wouldn't stop climbing. This was a mess. <laughs> this was fantastic. This... <laughs> Seeing everybody's reaction in, in all the different chats as the gold is just climbing through the roof. And then we we just recently had a horrible patch and people are like, oh, worst patch ever. No, this yes. caused the game to be down for a day. Yes, yeah, so the game was down for a while. Like I went to bed and, it, and it, I think it was working in the morning, but the game, I went to bed and it was not working. So like it was just one of those things. So this is the reason why I decided to make the video is uh, we were talking about the top, most worst experiences in yeah. in Marvel Strike Force. And this is what gave me the idea for the video is Dark Dimension 3, Node 3, in my opinion, was is the worst gaming yeah. experience I've ever had in any game I've ever played. And this is a clip. I, you tell me about what it was like. I mean, it was it was absolutely miserable, right? We're talking about when this was three year, more than three years ago, but this was just absolutely horrible, right? It was the 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 Chavez, the, the Ms. Marvel's assisting in the Black Panthers getting the energy, and then there was the Iron Fist later on, where they just came and you had negative progress, and it was it was a miserable experience. You would just load in with Phoenix, get your special off, do that over and over again for like a month, and just look at Wolver's Force face right here when he realizes that these characters are just getting one shot and deleted. And look at look at look at look at his face right here. That was the experience, right? <laughs> what was your experience with Dark Dimension time. 3? Yeah, so so I, I remember going into DD3 without Phoenix, like 50 attacks in, I finally got my Phoenix, and 25 attacks later, I was able to get through the first node. It was wonderful. Yes, it was, it was over and over and over again, loading in with Phoenix, Phoenix doing her special, and that was the entire gameplay experience for large chunks of Dark Dimension 3. Worst lazy terrible experience i've ever had and the reason why we brought this up is we were talking about heroes for hire and heroes for hire was a lot like that too when it came out like there were no solutions like you just went in the team was so much faster and like this is showing black order right here with mcmull and he's just like what is going on like they're not even taking a turn yet and they were getting deleted and people would have like 20 defensive wins with heroes for hire right yeah, and this was before Shang Chi. <laughs> yeah, and so it it got worse. It got worse. Yeah, look, they haven't even gone yet. And this and Black Order, I believe, was Arena Meta at the time, and they were just getting deleted before they took a turn. Uh, truly horrible it, experience. It was definitely terrible. So, I I we were talking about <laughs> Heroes for Hire being like when it came out, it was like one of the worst experiences ever. So, what? All right. So next on the list is. <sighs> Tadano Mac quitting. Oh my mm -hmm. God. And and why he quit was complicated and he did uh, issue out a statement. And so there was much more to this, but this was probably the single biggest screw up I've ever seen put out by a game and an offer. Tell me what happened. Yeah, so, so this offer drops and it was supposed to be a joke. Uh, unfortunately, the joke was on the, the the biggest spender in the game, the number one account in the game as far as size goes. And I, I, I just can't. The moment I saw it, I was yeah, like, me too. This, I was like is gross. this is gross. Why did they do this? Yeah, he eventually so he, he he eventually quit the game shortly after this. It says 
yeah. much offer so wow wow much prank such value very april fools bundle of resource grab today you will better than Tadano mac will you be um so like it, you know some people said this is doge speak or yoda speak at a yeah. minimum they didn't get his permission to use his name on an in-game offer a at worst this is like racist right i mean this is horrible yeah. right i mean I, I don't know he quit the game and, and there was even a video clip of the general manager like begging him to come back to the game and now they were gonna <laughs> they were gonna fly to japan or they were gonna fly him they were gonna fly a team to japan to talk to him or they were gonna fly him out to la to show him with and yeah he ended up quitting the game and currently uh -huh. is the only person in the game with a gold apocalypse no longer plays the game, and he was the largest player in the game for a while. Now, let's talk about Shang-Chi. So tell me about the, this This was a, a funny time in Marvel Strike Force history where I think we, we actually tracked it. 50% of all characters released had bug kits. Do you remember this? It was over like yes. a six month window. 50% of the kits on new character releases were bugged. And we were always complaining about it. And what was what was crazy is that Cerebro did a live stream on the main Marvel YouTube uh, web page, uh, YouTube channel, right? It was like the 15 million subscriber. They were live streaming Marvel Strike Force. And someone, mm -hmm. and, and her name is Megan, and she's like a Marvel celebrity, doesn't play Marvel Strike Force, and she is playing Shang-Chi, she's about 40 minutes into playing Shang-Chi, and she's like, oh, wow, Shang-Chi special heals? That's not, and Cerebro's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, someone, somebody that works for Marvel Corporate figured out the kit was bugged in 41 minutes and Scopely couldn't get it figured out, right? This was terrible, right? Uh, it was horrible. It was horrible. So the, the character came out. The character was way overpowered. It, it has it was doing things it, again. The healing was not in the kit. Actually, the uh, yeah, the healing was not in the kit. The healing was supposed to be just for uh, heroes for hire, but it wasn't in there at all. And it was doing like a 80 percent heal for all characters. And it, it was and it was doing, and it was doing like negative heal damage to the opponents or something yes. weird. It was like a negative heal. And so like it was like a drain mechanic almost like, and it was just like, so it was, it was, it was coded wrong. Absolutely yes. wrong. And somebody that worked, doesn't even work for Marvel strike force found the bug, like within just a couple of minutes, it was so embarrassing for them. Uh, things have gotten better. Would you say as far as releasing, uh, characters? No negative damage. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I mean, we don't have any negative damage problems anymore, but, uh, everything's still broken. All right, Seton quitting the game. This is one of my favorite clips. I don't know if I want to play it here on YouTube. Back in the day, you could get away with it. You can see that this has 127,000. And this was over basically Nick Fury unlock requiring Cree minions. Mm -hmm. And it was like a $100 offer to not to maybe get Nick Fury. It was horrible, right? This was right when the game first came out in the first year. Yeah, this was this was before my time. The only thing I know about him is the clip that you play constantly on your stream of him signing off. So this is before your time. time and you are aware yes. of this situation. So this is. the oh, yes. Yeah, this is like. Yeah. And so <laughs> at the time he was, I believe, the largest Marvel Strike Force content creators and uh, he quit the game over it. And maybe he knew something that I didn't know. He got away from the game. And and it was about them re requiring expensive Cree minion offers to unlock Nick Fury. Next. Oh, my God. This is a fun one. Morgan Le Fay event is a disaster. Cheating and hacking rampant in the leaderboards. And you can see right here. You can see like the number one spot in the leaderboards. And this was the first time they did a Scourge event. And everybody's trying to get a seven yellow Morgan Le Fay. And check out the number one player is somebody with a 1.2 million. <laughs> oh my God. This, I think this is one of the big issues that Philosopher had with the game. And eventually led for him to quit the game was, was the leaderboards and the time issues, right? Yeah, yeah. Now the the leaderboard issues. They were so confident that this was going to work, and they had no idea how to fix it. They, this took 
it was something like two weeks after the first scourge ended before anybody got any type of payout because they had no idea who was cheating and who wasn't. Yeah, this was a complete disaster. And the scourges were broken. The leaderboards were broken. It, 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 how long did it take to get a payout on this? It wasn't like a week. Like It, it seemed like it took forever to get a payout yeah. on this because they couldn't figure it out, right? Right. Uh, yeah, I think it was like two weeks. It was a really long time on this one. Yeah, I do like the system after the fact, but when it came out, yeah. I was super skeptical of how it was going to play out and the leaderboards, and it was definitely a mistake. Oh, boy, this one's going to be a fun one. Banned accounts. Scopely Eesh. banned. 1,600 players, and there were people in my chat saying, I promise to you, Trevor, I did not cheat I promise you. And I was like, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, what would a cheater say? Like, how do you respond to like somebody that is telling you I didn't cheat? And it turned out it was true. A percentage of those players that scopely banned mm -hmm. were incorrectly banned. And I don't have, have they actually even banned anybody since then? I feel like after this situation, they kind of like went way like way back on it right i can't even remember other than the 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 scourge leaderboards this was before the scourge leaderboards i know they banned people there for the scourge leaderboards but it see it feels like they've really backed off of it yeah it's they still were doing some banning through the first three scourges um but that's as far as i know that's like the that's about it but this was a this was a huge mistake and i owe a whole lot of people apologies probably not all of them though because most of them were cheaters yeah i remember um, i remember <laughs> there were people in the stream like promising that they did not yeah. cheat and i was like what are you supposed to say is like i don't know man like i i don't know like i i take it up with scopely and it's like and then then it turned out to be yeah. true that they weren't lying which it just made, it was a bad feeling all around. And then it, it, I think this is actually probably also one of the worst things. This was about around the time of Silver Surfer. And uh, they were, I don't know exactly what they were doing. I think they were using like Nox player and glitching it out or something like that. So they could buy multiple yeah. offers. And, the, and they were, and they, cause they had like a discounted Silver Surfer offer that you could only buy once. Yet there were people mm -hmm. buying it multiple times. And so they were having higher yellow stars than would have been possible because there just was only so many offers you could buy. And the person admitted to cheating. He literally messaged customer support and admitted to cheating. He says, I was forced to play an equal player by cheating to stay competitive because the competition was full of cheaters in the end. I've never imagined thinking that you've done was necessarily prevent cheating in your game. And, and they didn't ban the guy. They didn't ban the guy I mean, because he was a spender, right? Course. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for your money. Please keep spending in any way you choose, regardless yeah. of if anybody else is able to. This one, Alliance Auto Kick. And this is way back in the day. This was four years ago. Basically, they in implemented like some sort of new Alliance feature where if you were inactive over a certain amount of time, you just got kicked from your Alliance. Like if the leader stops playing the game, eventually it kicks it and gives it to somebody else, right? I mean, it's just meant to be people that abandon their accounts, right? But it started kicking everybody. Everybody got kicked. It was like the great snap. Did this happen to you or is this before your time? Uh, this was before my time too. I didn't have this. I, 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 don't, I don't know. This is actually, this might be the first time I've ever actually heard of this one. Yeah, this was a big mess. I remember like people were freaking out and like, um, like the leader got kicked, but the captain didn't. And then captain was trying to reinvite the people that got kicked. And it was like certain alliances just got, um, you know, the, 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 the ownership of the alliance got moved to the wrong person. And then that person wasn't friendly and so on. And then. then this is one that I think when you and I started chatting often was about Thanos giving. And I yeah. remember you being very upset about the Thanos giving. And I remember you saying to me that, um, you were pretty chill and things didn't bother you, but this actually broke you. What was your experience with this? Yeah, this was this was rough because I was super happy go lucky. I figured every you know different strokes for different folks. You got free to play. You got people to spend. You got people to do whatever. And then they put this event out and they hid the orbs. They they were like, "There's going to be you're going to get thousands of these orbs if you spend X amount of money." And the they we had no idea what was going to be in the orbs. And then the orbs came out and you open like 500 and get like 10 basic orbs. 
Yeah. It yeah. was it was it was horrible. It was horrible. a mess. It was trash because I yeah. know. I, yeah, you were you usually pretty chill. So, what is your top moment that you hated in Marvel Strike Force? I wrote down a bunch that we didn't get to. Do you want me to just go down my list of stuff that we missed? We didn't talk <laughs> about Australia Orb Gate. We didn't talk about mm-hmm. Gold Gate. We didn't talk about the 1.8 million blue ISO from the Invaders mission. We didn't talk about the free spider weaver shards. We didn't talk about the summer of blunder. Was there any that you that you thought of that were really terrible? Uh, the any anytime I think of like the worst thing in MSF, it always goes back to DD3. Like DD3. just from an experience standpoint, like. If a bad experience is something you feel forever, and I'm always going to think about it, it was yeah, rough. Yeah, for, and I know this is this may sound dramatic, but for me, uh, the first go around of DD3 was genuinely the worst, one of the worst experiences I've ever yeah. had in any video game. Like I remember thinking, yeah. you know, like people talk about Dark Souls being hard and punishing. This was just like, what? Why? Did, who built this? It, it was truly awful. <laughs> It was truly yeah. awful experience, yeah. and so many things have changed to them. More characters come to the game. You know, that was pre-Ebony uh, Ma. That was before ISO. There's been level cap increases and so on. So things have definitely changed, but when it was the first time around, it was absolutely miserable. All right, let me know in the comment section what your worst Marvel Strike Force or memorable Marvel Strike Force, worst memorable Marvel Strike Force <laughs> moment. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Hope you uh, love the game as much as we do. Bye for now.